speak. Actually, they're very clever at using ayat of Quran. And if you don't know Arabic and you don't know much about tafsir, they can run you. They can run circles around you, and you won't even know what's going on. They're very smart people. But if you, you know, one of the great scholars of, of uh, from from Pakistan, actually, uh, Dr. Mutaza Malik, was in a debate with them, and he said to them, "Listen, it's very simple. I don't even have to go through the entire Quran to refute your belief." We just open up Surah Al-Baqarah, start reading, we'll find how Allah defends the faith. They said, what are you going to find in Baqarah? There's no Khatam Al-Anbiya, Khatam al nabiyyin There's no you know, ending of the prophethood in Surah Al-Baqarah. What's he talking about? He said, read the ayah. They believe in what was sent to you, meaning who? The Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what was sent? Before you, there's no mention of anyone being sent. After, end of story, finish. <laughs> Subhanallah. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ And in the, in the afterlife, especially in the afterlife, I say especially because بِالْآخِرَةِ is مُقَدَّمْ يُوْقِنُونَ They are thoroughly convinced. إِقَان in Arabic, يَقِينَ and إِقَان in Arabic is to be convinced of something so solid, almost like you can see it. That's how solid you're convinced of it. You know how convinced you and I are that if we walk out of the meeting, and we don't show up, and we don't clock out and we leave the office, you are convinced you will get fired. You're convinced of that. That kind of conviction about missing salat, that kind of conviction about saying that which is haram, or seeing that which is haram, or doing that which is haram, or abandoning that which is you know, commanded to, they're convinced of it. Like they know the, you know, the cause and effect, they know what's going to happen if they don't take certain action. وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ You know, Iman was mentioned about a lot of things, but Yaqeen is mentioned about the Akhirah. Because in the end, Taqwa and changing yourself and committing to guidance will only happen when you are thoroughly convinced of this afterlife every day. Every day you're convinced of it. You know? So he says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ Those are the people committed to great guidance from their master. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And those are the ones who are, who are truly successful. May Allah make us all successful. I'll briefly tell you something about the word مُفْلِحُونَ أَفْلَحَ in Arabic, there's فَائِز. فَائِز is also successful. مُفْلِح is also successful. So what's the difference between فَائِزُونَ and مُفْلِحُونَ مُفْلِح is actually the farmer who, you know, he plants the seed, he waters it, he waits for a good year as far as no infestation, he waits for the rain to come, for the crop to grow, for the winds to not destroy his crop and at the end of that entire year of stress and struggle he finally harvests the crop and at the time of harvest is called Fallah, Muflih that's what he's called in other words he's successful but after a long time of labor Allah says these are the people who are successful but he used the word for successful that implies in it that it doesn't come without effort you have to put in a lot of time and effort to get to this success وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Now the second group, no doubt those who have disbelieved, سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ It would be the same upon them. The results would be no different. أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ If you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, were to try to warn them, if you warned them or you didn't warn them, لا يؤمنون They're not going to believe. A very difficult ayah to understand if you just read it shallow. Allah says, no doubt about it, disbelievers, whether you warn them or not, they will not believe. How can this be? Because the messenger, first of all, the messenger is being told. Nobody will give better da'wah than the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And even if the messenger of Allah gives them da'wah, they're not going to believe? Is this all disbelievers? You see, when you don't study Qur'an carefully, you can fall into lots of mistakes. If this is referring to everyone who disbelieves, there's no point of da'wah anymore. <laughs> Why not? Because whether you warn them or not, what's going to happen? They're not going to believe. This is a particular brand of disbelievers. These are the disbelievers, the messenger pled with them, warned them, gave them good news, gave them counsel, gave them examples, explained things one way, then another way, then another way, then another way, for an entire decade. And the only thing that increased in them was more animosity. Instead of becoming more open-minded over time, they became more closed-minded over time. So now that the hijrah has happened and Baqarah is an early Madani surah, these people who know that you're telling the truth, but they still don't want to hear it, these are the people at this point the door to da'wah is closed for them. Don't bother with them anymore. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ It doesn't say إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْفُرُونَ Kafaru in the past tense is specifically here referring to those who are adamant in their kufr and have proven that they have made their deal 
they've sold their souls, they're no longer interested in this message. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ Why is it that they won't believe? Allah has placed a seal upon their hearts. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ Now this, this is the ayah I will conclude with today, but I want to tell you something very beautiful and powerful about this surah. This surah, when, when we began, we said, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبِ No doubt, right? Where does doubt rest? What part of your body does doubt you know, affect? It's the heart. هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ هُدًا Guidance. Where does guidance rest? وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبَهُ Guidance is also in the heart. Then he says, هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Taqwa is where? فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Taqwa is also in the heart. Then he says, أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Belief, Iman. Where does Iman rest? In the heart. Everything we've been talking about so far is a matter of what? The heart, over and over again. Even kufr, inna ladina kafaru, those who disbelieve. Disbelief is where? In the heart. Literally inside the heart. This is where kufr lies. So now everything had to do with the heart. You know in Surah al jathiyah this is the 45th surah, a very similar ayah comes. This ayah says, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ Allah placed a seal upon their hearts and their hearing. So what did He seal first? The heart. The heart He sealed first. Isn't the entire context, the entire subject, didn't it have to do with the heart? It did, didn't it? So when it came to sealing, what did Allah seal first? The heart. Now if you go to Surah Al-Jathiyah, you find something interesting. He says, وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَعَلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ He sealed his hearing and his heart. So what did Allah change? Instead of sealing the heart first, there in Surah Al-Jathiyah, in the 23rd ayah there, in Surah number 45, He sealed what first? He sealed the, the ears first, the hearing first. How come? This surah seals the heart first, that one seals the hearing first. This is the last thing I'll share with you and conclude this ayah inshaAllah. In Surah Al-Jathiyah, way in the 8th ayah, we learn something. We, we, we listen, listen to this ayah. He says, يَسْمَعُوا آيَاتِ اللَّهِ تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ يُصِرُّ مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَنْ لَمْ يَسْمَعْهَا He listens to the ayat of Allah being read on to him. And he turns away in arrogance as though he hadn't even heard them. What was the crime of the disbeliever in Surah Al-Jathiyah? Refusal to what? Listen. So 15 ayat later when it came to sealing, Allah seals his ears first. خَطَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَعَلَىٰ قَلْبِهِ SubhanAllah. How subtle the speech, you know? Even how words are placed, Allah Azza wa Jalla puts perfection in them. This is the subject matter is the heart, so the heart is sealed first. وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ Then وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةً And on their, ear, on their eyes there's a cover. On their vision there's a cover. A cover means they see but they don't see. You know? لَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا They have eyes but they can't see with them. They see a messenger, they see the one with the perfect character but they have the audacity to call him a liar. They have the audacity to call him a magician even if they don't see it as magic. They themselves don't see it as magic. But they they'll still want to call it that. Their eyes have been covered. وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَادِهِمْ غِشَاوَةً وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And for them, especially for them, there is great punishment. Now later on, we're going to read عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Painful punishment. Now we're reading عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Great punishment. What is the difference between these two inshaAllah ta'ala? I'll share with you in detail tomorrow. How come Allah mentions great punishment? Then later on He will mention painful punishment. We'll conclude with this ayah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. I'm going easy on you guys today because it's the first day. But inshaAllah ta'ala uh, on the weekends, uh, Friday and Saturday, I'll, I'll, I hope to take maybe 45 minutes to an hour to cover more. And then on weekdays, hopefully just a page every day inshaAllah. Well, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran lakum. Yaakumullah. Who was this?